Hi there, it's Karen here from Crafty Little Miss K and today I am making a Father's Day card but it's not just any old Father's Day card because when you open it it has a little surprise element okay this is known as a wiper card and I've watched lots and lots of videos on YouTube and I've read lots of blogs on how to make these things because I could never get the mechanism to go right so what I've done is I've taken an amalgam of various people's instructions and I've made my own this was my second attempt. My first attempt was a butterfly one, a ladies one. Um, so yes, yeah, we're going to recreate this one now because I've got my dad, I've got my husband. So yeah, they both need cards, although they're not going to get the same card. I'll probably give this card away to somebody. Anyway, so what you need to start off with is the stamp set. Uh, geared up garage that matches with the garage gears thinlets. And they are in the summer catalogue and they are on page 42 and 43 and these are some of the cards you can make with them I should probably make something something a bit different I could even use a motorbike I guess for my husband although he doesn't ride them anymore and so you've got the stamp set it's a whole suite that you can get together so you've got the stamp set with the matching um, uh, thinlets which I'll show you in a second and then you get the papers which are six by six and there's a pack of 48 I think sheets there are four each of 12 double sided and they are great but really I mean you could use these for travel as well there's there's roads in here somewhere where was it so you've got the speedometers there you've got the mileometers there uh, there's your roads and things so you could use there's road signs there you could use this for travel if you're on holiday if you're doing scrapbooking whatever lots and lots of uses and as you can see I have started using it already so that's that and then also to go with it, uh, you can get the, I mean, I've got these out of my stash. I didn't have to buy this card especially. So Tranquil Tide and Basic Grey and Crush Curry are the predominant colours. There's also other colours. There's Real Red um, and, and things like that. Uh, you also can buy these little elements. If I just bring this up real close, stand up, bring this up close. You can see you've got little spanners in there, little car keys. And in fact, I've put a little tiny car key on a fob which I'm going to put on the card so there's that and then finally there's some ribbon which I seem to have oh there it is I was going to say there's some ribbon that goes with it as well which is a black ribbon with a silver um, strip down the middle oh that's what's that that's I don't know if that's going to focus or not but it is double sided it's the same both sides okay I'm not using the ribbon this time but I have used it on other cards so there we go and the stamps are using the new cling they are the new cling stamps which means they are super super sticky so when you get your stamp when you get your stamp on there it's really hard to take them off so what i've done is i've taken the advice of some other demonstrators who have done this and to make sure you can actually peel them off because if you peel them off too quick they'll just rip and all the all the foam will come away just in the bottom or on the corner of each of these I've put a little bit of washi tape just so I've got enough to get my finger under there just to peel it off. Okay, so you just need to be very, very careful with the new cling stamps. So there we are. And just finally, just to show you all the, you get loads and loads of dies in here. You've got this fantastic big cogs one here. And then you've got all the other dies that will go with the various elements on the stamps. So you've got the car, the toolbox, the Father's Day um, thing here. The best dad, which actually makes up a great little sign. So I've made that one there. I've done it in the opposite colours on that one. And it's also got the oil can as well and more sort of single cogs. So yeah, lots and lots to play with. So it's definitely worth getting it. And like I said, it is in the summer catalogue, which won't be lasting for too much longer past June. I think it ends, but I, don't quote me on that. Anyway, so we need to get started making this card. So it comes in two main parts. You've got the front part and the back. So what you'll need is I've got this all pre-scored and all pre-cut already just to try and make this video go do a little bit quicker because the light's starting to go. It's nearly six o'clock here in the UK at the moment and I really need to get this video finished. So you start off with a piece of um, the base card. I'm using white, um, which measures, let's move all my bits because all my bits are sitting on top of my measurements here. So this is uh, eight inches by this way and four and a quarter this way. Oh yeah, and then it's scored at six and a quarter uh, or sorry five and a quarter and six and a quarter and what you're going to do is make this the small panel come to the front okay and then I've got a couple of layers here 
and these are each a quarter of an inch smaller than the other one so if that was um let's see i did have these measurements written down but i think i've dropped them uh five so that's five by four and this one will be four and seven eighths or an eighth an inch not quarter and uh three and an eighth so I will put the measurements on um, down below in the description part bar. Um, so that's that part. And then you want the front bit, which is this bit. And that one will have, so you, you've got your little tiny panel that goes underneath, okay? But you start off again with it eight inches wide, but this time it's two and a quarter deep. And this time when you score it, you'll score it from this end and you score it at one and three quarters and two and three quarters. And then you fold it back on itself. So that when you actually put it together, those pieces will stick together like that. It will fold down flat. They will stick together like that. And then you just pick it up and there's your kind of like a Z card. OK, now this one, I'm actually using uh, Ordinary Whisper White. When I use this one and when I made this one, sorry, I used Thick Whisper White and it doesn't stay flat, which is fine because it means it will stand up nicely. So we'll wait and see if this one stands up. But it does mean it's quite bulky for you to put if you want to post it so it's quite bulky so I'm going to experiment using the Ordinary Whisper White so to go along with this panel the front panel here I have got a piece of black which measures five and an eighth by two and an eighth and then this one will be five by two and then this one will be uh, four and seven eighths by one and seven eighths and there's a little tiny piece here which I'm going to explain to you in just a second. Let's move this out of the way. So this is what they what you call your mechanism to do the wiper card. Okay, this is the piece that goes inside that makes the thing pop up. All right. So this measures one and a half. No, nope, one and three quarters by one and a half. Um, I did a little sample on here, which is actually one and a half square. So it's one and a half by one and a half, and that seems to work quite well. Okay. So, um, and what you'll need to do then is just measure up. I think I made this an inch. Some of the instructions I saw had different measurements, but I decided an, an inch. So if you hold it, whichever way you do it, you measure it an inch from one corner down and then from the same corner across. And then what you need to do is just fold it and fold it and fold it, make it really, really loose. OK, and that's all you need to do with that one. Then you'll come, we'll come back to this one afterwards. OK, so my elements are, I've got my red card like I had before. I've got my toolbox, which is going to be the pop up. You've already seen my little key that's going to go on the front. I've got the Father's Day plaque. If I bring this one back here, you can see I've used all of these ones. Not that one. I'm not using that one this time. But and I'm also going to be using some of the great um, designer paper, which I think I've just cut a little too wide. I oh, know that just fits beautifully on there. And you could layer it, make it a bit smaller and that one will go in there like that. OK. So we're going to add that as well. So let's pop these out of the way and get started. What we need to do is do some stamping first of all. So I'm just going to get a piece of scrap paper to because I'm going to be doing some stamping off. Because the ink I'm going to be using is basic grey and it's a little on the dark side if you stamp it like straight onto there from the ink pad. Okay. So I've got the, as you can see, the ink, you know, the oil stains that you'd get on the floor of a garage. And I'm just going to ink up my stamp. I'm going to stamp it off. And then I'm just going to put a little, very faint splodge on there like that. Okay. Stamp it off. And I'm just going to bring another one over here out the way like that. Now I do intend putting some wording just in there. So I'm not going to do any more stamping there. But what I will do is just do another one just up there. OK, so lots of oil stains and off to one side, I've gonna... got my chamois off to one side, so I'm just cleaning the ink off of that. And then I also want to add some of the little nuts that have maybe fallen to the floor. These ones are going to be stamped sort of without stamping off, just like that, so you can actually see them. And I'm just going to do a little random pattern up here, like so. I could, let's see, the thing's going to fold over there. I could probably pop, pop, pop one in there as well. OK, I'm not going to put any here because, I'd, like I said, I want to put some little wording in there. So and that's that for now. And I'm not going to put any stamping on the piece that goes on the top. So just bear with me a sec while I just clean this off. Otherwise, I'll forget later and then wonder why I'm getting um, well, they look a bit grey. OK, I might have to put the light on. I hate doing this because, whoops, 
because my light tends to make everything glare but it is getting a bit dark now okay so what I'm going to do now is just going to very quickly layer this onto the black this is all part of um, I decided to make this card actually originally apart from the fact I liked the the um, the set I made it originally because I'm part of a blog hop now if you've never heard of a blog hop you might have heard of people having blogs on, on um, Blogger or WordPress. Well, I've got a Blogger one. And a blog hop is where a group of people get together and they all do the same theme. And then they link you, link each other, to, um, to, you know, link yourself to the next person and the next person. You decide which order you're going to go in. And I'm part of a blog hop, which is doing um mail cards because we're coming up to father's day um in a uh, couple of months what are we in march april yeah in um june it is isn't it so yeah so we've decided to do some mail cards and i thought well i'll just make some samples of father's day cards so i'm going to put this one on here now and like i said to so the blog hop the link is down below uh, to my blog do go and have a look when you've read through my blog and looked at my pictures you can see at the bottom there's a list of names. Just make sure you put your stamped image at the top, otherwise it'll be underneath the the, uh, the bottom part of the card and it'll be wasted. Um, yeah, so um, have a look down the bottom and there'll be a link to another lady. And you can go and have a look. I've actually read some of the um, some of the blog already because it went it went live this morning. I'm late making this uh, video up, and. Um, yeah, he gets lots of inspiration because men's cards are always the hardest, I find. Anyway, maybe some other people find them quite easy. So, right, that one's done. So this one, I am going to do some stamping. I want to put you a classic like I have done on here. And to make sure that it's completely straight, I'm going to use my Stamparatus. Now, if you've never seen one of these before, these are great. There are other versions out there on the market, but they don't have... Um, what this one's got because this one is hinged as the other ones are but you can take them off and then you can do some step do some, use steps like that so you can sort of like repeat an image you maybe do like an ombre effect where it's like uh, full color there and then slowly fading out to nothing i'll do a video one day and uh, you can have a look so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to pop this on here and stick my magnets onto the card to hold it in place. Now these magnets, the reason I've got them covered in washi tape is because they are uber, uber powerful and they will snap together. And one of them, if you can see that's a bit crooked, one of them did catch the other one and they and they shattered. Okay, so I'm gonna put your classic down here just like I did on, did on the other one. Now I know the card is going to be straight because I'm using the grid lines on the paper, but there's also grid lines on these plates. And if you take it off, I don't know if you can see that. Yeah, you can look through the light. Sorry, my light not that sticking in the way. Let's move it out of the way a bit. That's it. Yeah, so you can see the, the grid pattern on there. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to get a ruler. Turn it over. I'm just going to get a ruler, and I'm just going to line the ruler up against one of the grids, one of the grid lines, and that will tell me that although it's below, it's, 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 it's straight, you know, the wording is the same sort of depth, if you like, below the ruler. So I'm going to take it as red. That is a nice straight line. And that was more by accident than anything else because normally they're crooked when I do these. So I'm just going to ink up this stamp. Now this one, where the some of the curls sort of like meet and go over, I'll show you one here. The um, There's little sort of like distressed areas. Okay. If you don't like those, just get yourself a black pen and fill them in. What did I do on this one? I think I filled them in on this one, so you can see there's no there's no sort of like funny bits on there. So, I've, but this one I'm going to leave a bit more distressed, and as you can see, nice and straight. All right, so I'm going to bring my chamois over now. I usually keep the off off, off camera because it's well loved. So, just going to wipe off all that ink. Okay, all you need to do to read to um because these things come damp, they come moist horrible word that isn't it um and then what they'll do they'll dry out and and they go all curly and nasty i've got another one let's see if i can find now uh, this one has been dried out i think oh it's no it's still a little damp so it's um but when they dry out they go really hard 
and they sometimes curl up so you just put them into run them under cold under water again i usually just use cold water and it'll make it all nice and pliable and, and damp again and it'll wipe the ink off beautifully so that's that one done and then i want to do the wording on the other panel so let's move it off to let it dry for a sec so let's bring this one in i'm going to turn that one back like that and then i'm just going to line this up with some lines again I'll use those ones there, I think, like that. And then in my stamp note, I took it out. I took it out and I mounted it on a block, but I don't trust myself not to get it crooked. So this one says, you should jumpstart my heart. That's on my husband. Anyway, so that's going to go roughly there because when the mechanism pops up, hopefully it'll be roughly in the middle like that. So I could actually move it up there. Okay, so in fact, I'll put it in that blank area just there. I've got no idea if that's straight or not. I'm going to use the lines on the grid, on the plastic here, to make sure that the lines on here are straight. So let's grab my ruler again and line it up. That's not too bad. It's a little crooked, actually. And this one, just double check. It's a smidge out, I think. It's a smidge out, which means I just need to try and pull that off. That should be straight. Let's try that now. Yeah, that's better. Okay. So again, inking it up. I'm using Memento ink. Uh, I like Memento ink. I think it's great. There we go. So that's nice, isn't it? Okay. And again, let's bring my chamois over to clean that stamp off. That's lovely. Right, I'm going to stick it on top of the case so I don't lose it. And then I can put my stamp artist away. Oops. Stick on the shelf under there. Okay, so we've got that bit there. And what I'm going to do now is layer all this up. And I've put three layers on here just to pull in some of, a bit more colour other than just black and white. Okay, so let's yeah, let's do that one first. I always use wet glue. I find it's a lot easier when you're layering because I seem to have a, like a I don't know a bit of a a wonky mind or a wonky eye or something, and I can never get them to go straight. So I'm just going to with the wet glue. It does give you a little bit of time to move it around and get it just as you want it, like that. That's better. And then a friend of mine showed me this. I don't know where she got it from. Something she thought of herself, maybe. Just put the, um, just smooth the, the, um, all the glue out underneath. So, you know, where I put those squiggly lines, you won't see any sort of like shadow of them because you're just smoothing all that glue out underneath and it helps to hold it. I'm just going to get rid of that because that's very distracting. Okay, and then lower it up again on the black. That. and as well as that it means that where you haven't put the glue near the edge it will smooth the glue out a bit more so you haven't got this sticking up okay so that's that and then finally let's make sure I put that the right way around that's going to go on on there I won't put any more on here just yet because I want to do that mechanism in a second so one last lot of glue Let's just flatten that for a sec. Okay. And that's that. All right, so that's how it's going to, that's how it's building up nicely now. So the next thing I'm going to do is going to do the bits of paper next, the uh, designer paper. And one piece is larger than the other, and that's the, the bit that goes at the bottom there. And I'm beginning to wonder now if maybe I should have mounted it under. I might just put some black behind it. Okay, so this was... Um, let's get my little trimmer out. I've got this lovely little trimmer, this tonic trimmer I've had forever. And it's still as sharp as the day I got it. Okay, so that's... One, two, three, four. That's five eighths there. Oh yeah, I've got the measurements on here, haven't I? So the larger piece is... So I want this to be 
two and an eighth, which is there, by one and five eighths, four five, which will be there. And then I just want to take that back down to one and a half by two. And then that will layer on there like that. And then this one is one and five eighths by one and three quarters, I hope. Yes. So that's the measurement of this one. So, so I'd say one and three quarters, which is there. By one and five eighths. And then take an eighth off of this one. So that'll take it down to one and a half by one of five eights. Okay. Get rid of all the little bits of paper. Right, let's just quickly mount those up. on the flat otherwise it won't go. That's better. That's it. I've got a bit of glue in my finger, I can feel it sticking to everything. Okay. So right we're gonna pop that in there like that. moving. I'm going to put that there. This paper's really cute. They've got a, um, a key ring on here that's got like little dice on it like you get in, in your cars that were popular back in, was it the 80s or something? Okay, now for the mechanism. Right, so you have it, so you folded, um, you, sorry, your scored end is this end. Flip it over and then get your little bit of your mechanism that you've got, which you've already done here. And then what you want to do is have it so it's to the left and then this edge and this edge will match up with this fold line and this edge here. I'm going to put it just inside and then in theory, if you do that, your other end of your scored line on the diagonal here will meet up with this score line here. Mine is just touching it a bit too much. I might just take a smidge off the edge there just to make sure it doesn't catch when it's closing. That's better. Okay, then you bring this back and you're going to be gluing the inside of that triangle that stick up. So let's do that bit first. Oh God, that piece of glue on my finger is really annoying me. Okay. So you want to put plenty on, but with don't put so much on that it oozes out everywhere because you don't want it going on the back of your mechanism, um, back of your carving, making it all stick. Right, so just measure, just match those up again. So it's sitting nicely on that fold line there. That's sitting on that fold line there, and just press it down, and then turn that back. Give it a good old press to make sure that glue's nicely spread out. And there we go. And then what you're going to do is turn it up like that. And then your mechanism, I've made mine a little on the short side. Um, all I've got is a little piece of acetate here just to hold it so you actually, so you can see through it. You can see the um, the markings on the card there through it. Um, I've probably made it a little on the short side, but it doesn't matter. I don't want it to be sort of like sitting proud of the card when it's, when it's open. So what I've done is I've just stuck it, we used the red tape, you know, this, this nylon-y stuff. And I've stuck it onto the back and then I've turned it over and then stuck some on the front. So hopefully if I've got this right, that will go that way. Um, what I want to do, oh, there's one thing before we do that. Let's just pop that over this. It doesn't catch on anything. So you turn that up and then you turn it back like that. Hang on a minute, let's get this right. So it's got to go that way, hasn't it? 
Let me, that's it. Okay, yeah. That's it. And then you turn it over that way. Yeah, I've got it now. See, I keep getting confused with this thing. Right, so you turn it up like that. Then you turn it over. No. See, I've forgotten already what I did now. Fold it down. That's it. So you've got the piece sticking out here. Turn it over. Lay it down. And put it back. Now, I can see that this piece here is actually sitting down below that bit there. So I'm going to snip that off before I do anything else. Just make it a bit smaller. Like that. Because I don't want it being seen. Let's get this right there. Like that. Yeah, I don't want it to be seen sort of like on this out here. So I've just taken it back a little bit, okay? And then turn it over. Let's get rid of that scrap. Open it up again with your mechanism po po poking out that way. And that's where you put your, um, your thing. So if I just do the same here. So if I, that was that way, and then you'd open it up like that. And then, so your mechanism would then go across here there it's always best to make a little sample one just to make if you can't remember because i'm terrible for for directions little fiddly things like this i'm just terrible for directions okay so that's actually sticky this side now so does that i want to make sure so that goes that way and i'm going to put it about right i don't want it to be below that so i'm going to put it about halfway up like that and then hopefully if i've got that right please let it be the right way around Okay, so that's going to be stuck like that. Oh, yeah, there we go. There we go. Okay, so your next job now is to stick everything down. So we're going to stick glue on here and pop it on there. And with it being kind of like a card that moves, you want to make sure you put plenty on. Don't use the snail or the, the tape rollers like this because it won't be strong enough. It will come apart. You can use the tearing tape or the, the red tape that I had I showed you a moment ago but again like I said I like to use the wet glue because then I can move it around now the idea is that you make sure that your front of your card is right to the edge of the base all right so that it doesn't go crooked when you are when it's sitting when it's all sort of been put together that's not bad actually let's move that a little bit okay and then what I'm going to do now is the front panel, it almost almost meets where that black is. So what I'm going to do is make sure that the glue stays below, say about a quarter of an inch or so below your paper. And then you know it won't show above your um, the card front. So I'm just going to lay it flat to stick it all down. And then what I want to do, while the glue's still wet, I'm just going to ease it into the corner a bit more and then make sure that it sits flat. That's it. I'm just going to press it down for a second to let that glue take. And there we go. That mechanism is looking, looking great. It's better than the other one. All right, so now last thing to do is to get a rubber. I've got a little tiny bit of glue stuck on it. If you see that little mark there, so I'm just going to rub that away. A white pencil rubber will get rid of any bits of stray ink because I for some reason seem to spread it everywhere I don't know if it's stuck to my fingers or whatever so now what you want to do is finish off the front of the card so what I did with the other one is I put this one on first and I glued that one that one on which I will do again okay stick it over there like that and make sure the words are straight there we go and then i got dimensionals for the car oops turn that one over not this okay so i'm going to stick the car on there like that and then the little key ring Again, that can have a dimensional on it, on the back. And then that can go, oh, now, let me just see. I'm gonna stop that. Actually, I might just stick that one on there. 
like that. What you could do then, if you wanted to, you could put your person who the card's going to go to, their little initial on there then. And there we go. So the card's made. Cute, huh? And there's room on the back that you can write if you want to put a verse on the back. Okay, so there we are. That's my cards. So like I said, I have done some ladies' ones. My very first one, I couldn't get the mechanism right, so it's just an ordinary Z card, so we won't show you that one. Yeah, so I've got these these lovely cards. I mean, these these ones are so stunning because I've got the um, Wink of Stella on. I mean, if you're the man that you're giving this to likes a bit of glitter, if he's into glitter or, or pretty, pretty things, then you can always maybe make the card glittery. I would love a glittery card. That'd be so cool. Anyway, thanks for watching. I hope you like it. I hope you understood all my instructions. Please do have a go. I've had lots of people contact me privately on Facebook, uh, hey, you're on YouTube and said, please show us how you made it. So there we are. Anyway, have fun. And I'll be back soon with another um, project for you to try. Bye for now.